Hello, this is Dean Phoenix with another Final Fantasy X video, and this time it's about playing Blitzball early in the game in Luca. So you have the first compulsory game for Blitzball when you get to Luca and you have to face the goers. And if you watch my uh, separate video about that, I have a video about my thoughts of how you beat them and some of the important techniques that you can use, uh, such as keeping the ball away from their better players and also pulling players out of position subtly and to enable you to get passing lanes and free up your strikers. So as you can see here, this is just uh, the end of one of the games I played against the look the goers to find those techniques. And you can win that and get the strength sphere quite early in the game, uh, which is very useful. So please don't watch my video about those techniques. But following on from that, after you complete that game, uh, you get to the safe sphere on the Mien High Road and you get to be able to start signing Blitzball players. Now normally you would leave that to later in the game. The main blitz part of the Blitzball grind is you have to play a lot of games to get Waka's Celestial Weapon, uh, World Champion, because you, you have to get the Sigil from playing Blitzball and various leagues and everything else. But there are some really good prizes you can get as well. And so what you can do is after you've played that first game against the goers, you can reset for a specific prize because we want a Teleport Sphere and use that on the standard sphere grid. It's not necessary on the expert sphere grid, but on a standard grid playthrough you can actually teleport Yuna to Lulu's grid and uh, get some really good Aura spells which makes her able to kill enemies because she has extremely high magic, whereas normally she doesn't have any black magic spells so she's just limited to healing and calling Aeons. So you use reset data just at the bottom of the Blitzball menu and then you want the league prize to come up as a teleport sphere. Now that's pretty easy and it'll come up fairly soon, it's a decent chance of getting a teleport sphere. But because you're resetting the data, you also have the opportunity to just keep resetting it until the teleport sphere comes up as the prize for the winning the league, but also return spheres come up as the top scorer prize. So that's what we want, we want teleport sphere as the prize for winning the league and then return spheres as the top scorer prize and the reason you do that is because when if you have a tie for the top scorer and it's two of your own players then you can get multiple of the top scorer prize so if you get teleport sphere as the prize and return sphere as the top scorer and then you have Tidus and another forward as the top joint scorers then you can get two return spheres you can actually do it as many times as you want so you can have three or four players tie and get multiples but we're just going to focus on getting two uh, and you can see there that that's reset until we've got the teleport sphere and the attack re and the return sphere as the prize. So then you want to save the game and what you do is when you go into the menu a couple of times, you go into the play virtual menu, the tournament will come up with attack reels. Now the pretty much it's almost guaranteed, I think it is guaranteed, to be attack reels as the first place tournament prize the first time a tournament comes up. If you keep entering and exiting the menu, you can see here the tournament is now greyed out again because the current tournament goes away if you haven't started the tournament to lock in the prizes. If you just keep going into the menu then the tournament will disappear and become greyed out and then after going into the menu four more times a new tournament will come up with different prizes. But the problem is is that you want attack reels first because attack reels will come up with the first tournament prize and if you let it disappear then the next time the tournament come up, the next time you reset the tournaments, however many times you do it, it will never be attack reels until you win an, uh, another tournament. So what you do is, you go into the menu uh, two or three times whilst the menu is, the tournament is still greyed out, and then this is after you've reset the data to have Teleport Sphere as the prize for the league, and Return Sphere as the top scorer prize in that league, so you save it, and then you go into the menu a couple of times, and wait for attack reels to come up as the tournament prize and what we want is for return spheres to be the top scorer prize in the tournament as well because the same thing applies you can get the top scorer for one or two of your players and get more return spheres now the people we're going to sign you can see here at the fountain at the uh, stairs at the end of Luca there is Jumal on the bench now he's 200 per game to sign but he's a very good keeper early on and you want a good keeper uh, so make sure that you sign him. Now a league is 10 games and uh, the tournament that you play will be either 2 or 3. So you do need these players for about 12 games so it does cost a fair amount of gil. But if you've been following my little walkthrough so far you'll have farmed on the SS Licky as well. So you should have plenty of money. There's Shani there by the fountain and she's an excellent forward. She's slightly more expensive than Wedge. So I'm not actually going to use her in this example but she is an excellent forward if you feel like you want to spend a bit of extra money. Uh, here you can uh, see Zalitz sat down and he is a good defender. He's not very good at passing or, in, or dealing with encounters, um, but if you want a really solid uh, defender with block and attack, he's a good place to start. I will just be sticking with Jasu and Bota because you don't have to pay them extra uh, and they are quite serviceable defenders if you get them leveled up a couple of times. 
So I'm just going to stick with Jassu and Bota and the opponents will have a hard time scoring past um, Jumal who we signed as the goalkeeper anyway. Now Wedge here is an excellent forward, uh, he's very very good. He starts off with 17 shot which is very very high for a low level and he also quite quickly gets good block and attack and that makes him a really good forward for the tactics we're going to be using because I have Zev Ronso as the midfielder. Now Zev is quite reasonably salaried, he's only 150 a game. He has really high HP, he's not as slow as a normal Ronso, he's okay speed. He has fantastic passing and blocking and endurance stats. The only thing he doesn't have is good attack. But if you put Wedge as one as one of the forward spots next to Tidus, then Wedge's attack and block complement Zev's stats really well because he has higher attack and he will go first. And so Wedge will do the tackle and normally win it. And if he doesn't, then Zev will be there to either um, finish off the tackle or to uh, block, use his really good block stat to stop any passes going forward. I'm just going to show here, there's a player who I don't normally sign but is an option, I just want to make you aware. And this is an Albed player called Nidus. Now he is extremely slow, like 30 speed, he moves like a snail. But he has fantastic endurance and if you can get him to level 3, he has Napshot 2 as a starter technique. So one of the things I'm going to cover later is Dato, who is one of the starting Aurochs forwards. He gets Napshot as a technique. And Nimruk, who is the goalkeeper for the Albed, has an incredible catch stat and is very difficult to score past. So you can put him to sleep with Napshot. Now if you're really struggling to do it with Dato and his regular Napshot, because it may take a few times, you can sign Nidus, get him to level 3 and he has Napshot too. Um, so that's just an option. Now what we're going to do is we play Tidus and either Dato or Wedge as the other forward. And then Zev as the midfielder. Jasu and Bota as the defenders and then we put Jamal in goal. Now because we've reset the stats uh, you want to make sure that you start the you need to save it when you've got the league held with the teleport sphere and return sphere as the prizes and top scorer and then you have the attack reels tournament you want to start the attack reels tournament with return sphere being the top scorer and that locks in that tournament and stops it from going away and then you can play some of the games in the league to level up your players. So this is exactly like my video about how you beat the goers. You start with, uh, I actually got the goers again in, as the first match in this tournament. But what you're going to do is just spend the first half, complete one, one pass with Tidus, and then spend the entire rest of the half keeping the ball away from their players and just passing around. Now the Albed Sykes are too good to do this against, they're just too good. So you probably end up just forfeiting that match if you get them as the first match in the league. If they come up as the first match in the tournament to win attack reels, then you can do it. Um, and I'll come on to some tips for beating them later. But what you want to do is get the ball back and basically spend the entire first half of your first game passing around and getting as much experience as possible. So this is particularly true if you're uh, against the Sykes. You want to try and complete as many passes with Dato as possible and get him to level 3 so that he can equip Napshot as his technique because that's a good way of trying to beat the Albert Sykes. So you see here I'm just using Dato and uh, Bota and Zev and just passing about a lot and as you can see here if you spend the entire first half passing this is one half of experience then you can get a lot of uh, experience points and get your players leveled up and when players get to level 3 they're able to equip a technique. So uh, you'll quickly find that Zev's stats go up apart from his attack. His attack stays low, but all of his other stats are excellent. You want Dato to get to level 3 so that he can use Napshot if you're facing the Albert Sykes. So you can try and put Nimrook to sleep. So that's very important. So you can see here that as soon as you get them to uh, level 3, players will be able to equip techniques. Uh, so you want uh, Tidus to have uh, the jack shot. Now he will sometimes be able to score past um, Nimrook if you get a little bit lucky and you get point blank range. But again, Dato you want to equip, make sure he has nap shot. Uh, and then Zev starts off with Wither Pass 2 but that takes a lot of HP to use. So until he gains a few levels and his HP skyrockets because he does have very, very high HP. And you just want to stick to with a pass one and just make every pass that you do with a pass. And the reason for that is that for a normal pass you get one experience but for a, a technique pass like with a pass or venom pass you get an extra experience point for using that technique. So you get two experience instead of one for every pass that you attempt and every pass that you complete you get another two experience. Now because of this, because Zev has really high endurance and uh, extremely good passing ends up being really difficult for the computer to get the, the computer players to get the ball back from you 
and you can just spend a lot of time passing about and you can draw players towards him um, so against the Ronsos he can just use his extremely high passing to pass past multiple players uh, against teams like the Beasts who aren't very good um, or the uh, Guado teams he can use his massive endurance to win uh, win through tackles and then make the pass so he has an option for everything on offense and he's extremely good now, if you're playing the Sykes like I say they're ex they're extremely tough especially if you get them as the first match in the tournament uh, which is why I would say save before you start the tournament so that you can reset and try and avoid that what you can do is if you have nap shot with Datto, like we just got him to level 3, you can keep taking pot shots until Nimrook saves your shot but falls asleep. So you can see there that um, I managed to make him fall asleep and you can see in the distance that uh, he is actually still asleep as well. And then you can just shoot from pretty much anywhere and as long as you still have shot uh, as your stat when it reaches the goal, you'll be able to score and you'll even be able to beat the Sykes. So if you do that and then you make sure that you score as many goals as possible against the other teams, in this example I have signed Wedge and I have scored three goals with Tidus and three goals with Wedge in the tournament and this was only a two game tournament so if you had a three game tournament and you could manage to avoid the Sykes then you could easily get uh, two or even maybe three players to be the joint top scorer. So you can see there that Tidus and Zev have quickly leveled up and uh, just make sure you keep count of how many goals your strikers have scored. So as you can see uh, this is me winning the tournament first so I just win the tournament and I get the attack reels overdrive which is really useful for Waka and so two or three games is definitely worth doing that and then we get return spheres as the top scorer prize and I get two because Tidus and Wedge tied for the top scorer. Now return spheres are extremely useful because when you get customization when Riku joins your party they can make first strike on a weapon and you can use that for Tidus and that's extremely useful but also if you do win a league and get a teleport sphere you can teleport Yuna to Lulu's grid and then use a return sphere to put her back to her own grid and this is what I'm going to be doing as part of my overpowered playthrough because it's extremely extremely strong technique in a league match if you lose if you intentionally lose um, then if you've won enough games so you win eight or nine games you can forfeit the last game or last few games and you don't need to bother playing the whole games out so it takes less time you see there I've easily won the league, I could have actually forfeited one or two more. And Wedge and Tidus both have 12 goals each and are the top scorers. So you get the teleport sphere for winning the league. Now this takes about an hour and a half and depending on how thoroughly you play Blitzball and if you, how many games you forfeit. And then I've got two return spheres. So in total I've got attack reels from the tournament, two return spheres from there and then two return spheres from the league. So it's well worth doing and I'll follow up uh, what happens in my overpowered playthrough. At the end of the 10th game, you want to quit out of the Blitzball menu without checking the new league prizes and then save your game. And what that will let you do is, as long as you don't go into the Blitzball menu anymore for a long time, uh, you will actually be able to get st status reel straight away because the league prize isn't fixed until you go back into play Blitzball. So here I go back into play Blitzball and now the league prize is fixed. So that's what you want to avoid. So when you finish the 10th game, just come out of the league and then just save it without ever going back into play Blitzball and just leave that if you can and that will let you make it, it will be easier to get status reels later on. So once Lulu has activated this um, middle spell, I think it's Thundara, um, the uh, four Ara spells, you can see here that Lulu, that uh, Yuna is nowhere close to her grid but because we've got the teleport sphere, you can teleport uh, Yuna to any sphere that's been activated by an ally and so I can teleport her straight to this Thundara and use four ability spheres to get all of the Ara spells. Now Yuna actually has higher magic and much higher agility than Lulu does um, so she is actually an even better black mage than Lulu is and it means that she can overkill enemies quite easily and this makes um, it extremely powerful because the more you overkill the more AP you get and so you just get stronger and stronger. She can either use a few sphere levels to pick up some nodes here and get extra magic from Lulu's grid or just use the return sphere to go straight back to her own grid and then you can save a return sphere for putting first strike on a weapon later. So you have Lulu as a very strong black mage but then you have Yuna as an even more powerful black mage which is extremely useful and I'll be making good use of through my playthrough. So I hope you enjoyed, please like and subscribe for more videos and thank you for watching.